Workers must ensure that they do not remain within range of any moving load if the movement of a load or any other part of the equipment creates a danger to them. Keep out of the line of fire. The crane operator must not move the load or the equipment if doing so exposes a worker to danger. The swing radius of the crane must be considered to ensure that no workers can enter an area where they could be hit by or crushed between the crane's body and other objects or structures. We should also mention here that when approaching a crane, you must be careful to stay out of the crane operator's blind spot. Depending on the crane's configuration and the position of the cab, the operator will have a limited range of view. If you approach on their blind side, not only will you risk injury from being struck by the equipment, you'll also have to deal with a very angry crane operator. If a worker could be caught between a moving part of the equipment and another object, an employer must restrict entry to the area by workers or require workers to maintain a clearance of at least 600 millimeters between the powered mobile equipment and the object. Barriers may be needed to ensure unauthorized personnel do not enter the lift area or the path of travel while the load is being lifted and moved. Personnel should never be positioned between the load and a stationary barrier or equipment. Never work under a suspended load or place any body part under a load. When moving or placing machinery, workers must stay out of the path of the load as it is being maneuvered into position. Regardless of the height or location above a final resting position, if there is a risk that losing control of the load could result in striking or pinching a worker, then workers must not place their hands on loads or otherwise work in close proximity to a suspended load. The rigging arrangement and the shape or size of the load must be carefully evaluated when determining the possible swing or fall area of the load. Conservative judgment is required. Make sure that everyone stands clear when loads are being lifted, lowered, or freed of slings. As slings are being withdrawn, their hooks may catch under the load and suddenly fly loose. You should conduct lifting operations in such a manner that if there were a failure of equipment, no one would be injured. Unfortunately, many pinch and crush injuries occur every year because workers mistakenly believe they can grab onto a shifting or swinging load and bring it under control. Only once the load is within its final placement may it be adjusted by hand. The safest method for a rigger to control a load suspended from a hook is with a tagline or a restraining device. A tagline allows the rigger to control the load from a safe distance in the event that the load shifts or moves unexpectedly. If you may be in danger because of the movement of a load being lifted, lowered, or moved by a lifting device, you must use a tagline of sufficient length to control the load. You must also use it in a way that prevents the load from striking you. You must not use a tagline over operating equipment or where it may create a danger. The purpose of the tagline is to help keep control of the load and prevent uncontrolled rotation of the load. You have to remember your ability to control the load is limited. Place the tagline at points on the load for control during liftoff, traveling, and placement. You must never loop the line around your arm or body. You should have a clear view of your travel path and the signaler so that you can anticipate the load's movement. You will have best control of the load if you trail the load while traveling with it. Taglines must be kept free of knots. Remember, regardless of your physical condition, your ability to maneuver a load is limited. You must be aware of your abilities and limitations against such forces. The more vertical the pull, the less effective the control. Hazards in the workplace must be identified, and the risks associated with these hazards must be assessed. Once these hazards are identified and assessed, then controls must be put into place to eliminate them or protect the worker from them. The main ways to control hazards are through elimination, substitution, engineering controls, administrative controls, and finally PPE. These methods are also known as the hierarchy of control because it refers to the order in which control methods are most reliable and effective to least reliable and effective. Elimination is always at the top of the hierarchy since it's the most effective means. Elimination is the removal of the hazard. For example, a plant could be designed to ensure the necessary equipment or control panels for workers are accessible from ground level where there is no risk of falling from heights. Second in the hierarchy, we often see substitution. 
Substitution involves replacing hazardous material or processes with something that is not a hazard or is less hazardous. An example of substitution would be switching out a toxic chemical or changing a process for one that can accomplish the same job but is not toxic or potentially hazardous to workers. Next on the list is engineering. Engineering controls isolate workers from the hazard. They are a good method of controlling hazards because they work independently of workers. If we look at rigging work, one hazard is losing control of the load due to underestimating the weight or improper rigging equipment or sling configuration. Engineering controls to control these hazards include having the load weight permanently stamped on the equipment and lifting lugs affixed to the load or equipment. Next in the hierarchy is administrative. Administrative controls change the way people work. It includes things like safe work practices and procedures. Examples include this training course being required for workers involved in rigging operations and a worksite rule that taglines are used to direct the load, etc. Last on the list we see personal protective equipment. PPE is always considered the last line of defense. It is the least effective means of controlling hazards since it simply reduces the worker's exposure to the hazard and is only effective if it is used properly. Examples include steel-toed boots and hard hats.